They thought the most important people were four letters ESPN. I was just stunned that ESPN would be so uh, stupid. You know, I had, I had 15 great years and then three years that I shouldn't have been there, the last three. Dan Patrick is a broadcasting legend. What did you say? Dan Patrick has changed sports radio and television. Dan's got a massive and loyal audience built over decades of doing this so well. He was part of the golden era for SportsCenter, left ESPN and created Lane for his own radio show that is now simulcasted on television, helped create a first of its kind degree at Full Sail University. To succeed in this business, you have to be ready for what's next. But the core of great sports casting, I don't think will ever change. And this program brings it all together. Dan has been a trailblazing original who will age like fine wine as other sports media members continue to follow his blueprint. His contributions will be highlighted in this video, as well as his bumpy path to success, filled with funny moments, controversies, and a man cave any sports hoarder would be proud of. Welcome back to Unlikely Success, where I focus on attributes of success through covering celebrities, athletes, and finding stories to learn from. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe and comment to support the channel. Let's get into Dan Patrick's journey to sports casting greatness. As we start our topic, I want to be very clear on one thing from the top. I am a confessed Dan Patrick show fan, and I think the show's hilarious, as well as I believe their sports takes are very informed. With that, let's get started. Daniel Patrick Pugh was born in Zanesville, Ohio. He was one of six children and starred in basketball at William Mason High School, once scoring 36 points in a game, showcasing a silky smooth jump shot, but nearly no defense as even he would describe it. He even earned a scholarship to Eastern Kentucky, where he would stay for two years prior to transferring to Dayton University, where he would later earn his degree in communications. Dan would enter the media as Dan Pugh, working in radio for the first four years of his illustrious career. I did morning drive radio at a rock and roll station. And uh, I remember the first day I started, the Ayatollah Khomeini was in power in Iran and he was doing bad things. And I had to actually read some serious news. I didn't know how to pronounce his name. And totally mm -hmm. butchered it all morning long. And then finally my program director said, um, you should watch the news, listen to the news if you're going to do the news. If not, then you need to move wow. on. In 1983, a big break would happen. He would replace Keith Olbermann. Dan and I worked together a decade before we started hosting SportsCenter. You succeeded me as the sports bureau reporter for New York CNN in 1984 when I left to go to work for Channel 5 in Boston. Temporarily abandoning radio, he would land opportunities to cover the World Series, NBA Finals, and Winter Olympics during his time with CNN. Dan would also make a name change and become Dan Patrick. Alongside the new name was a new job. DP would decide to join ESPN, or the mothership, as he now calls it. He joined in 1989. We'd like to welcome into our fold from CNN coming over here to the Sports Center, Dan Patrick, and I'm sure you will enjoy him as maybe you did before at some other place. Welcome aboard, pal. Thank you, Chris. It doesn't get any better than this. That's Let's why I changed uh, area codes. It may not have been clear, but this single decision would change Dan Patrick's career forever. Before SportsCenter became the ubiquitous highlight show it is today, it was marginal late night programming. After joining ESPN in 1989, Dan would anchor SportsCenter and continue to build his skills as a radio broadcaster on The Bob and Brian Show, Wags and Elliot Show, and covering sports for Ohio's WLVQ. Dan was working diligently to improve his radio and television broadcasting skills simultaneously. In a stroke of luck, ESPN would pair Dan with his old friend, Keith Olbermann in 1992. The pairing had a shade under a five-year run and increased the show's popularity immensely. Keith and Dan had clear on-air chemistry. They had a brash way of delivering highlights. Their unique brand of sports captured fans across America and led to disgruntled management. That was the infamous meeting that, that we got called in upstairs. The the infamous no. meeting. Okay, <laughs> that, uh, one of, but that was the one where they, they were rattling the saber there. That was the most memorable one. An iconic ad campaign. I think the question I get asked most is at the end of the show when the music's playing, the anchors are talking to each other, what exactly are they saying? I Dan Patrick. I keep holding them. See you later. Look at these sub men's clothes when you got that up there. When was the last time your hair actually moved? Like 1977? When you put your fingers through it, I had to kick you. This ad campaign was largely the result of Dan and Keith's previous reprimand for describing their Sports Center hour as, quote, the big show. They insisted we stop calling ourselves the big show. And Keith said, 
we don't know how many people are watching. We're kind of making fun of ourselves, calling ourselves the big show. We're not. And yeah. then everybody took us seriously. Like, you guys really think you're the big show? We go, no. Which was now replaced with. This is Sports Center, and the next thing we knew, <laughs> they've been running the same damn commercials for 35 years. Dan and Keith were pushing boundaries during Sports Center with comedic lines. Well, we're so polite. Mm -hmm. Isn't it that? Humble. Yeah. Humble. Always that. Handsome. Attempts to make each other laugh. I always I always took a, 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 a page from my heroes, Bob and Ray, the comedians, mm -hmm. who said that ultimately they loved the audience, they loved being there, they loved entertaining, but the key goal for each of them was to try to crack the other guy up. And an aggressive pursuit of making the show truly great. After nearly five brilliant years of sports highlights that resulted in both anchors' personal brands growing, it also took its toll on Keith Olbermann. Was it a choice of Keith Olbermann to leave uh, yes. ESPN and Sports Center? Yes. Yes. I think he had gotten to the point where he had mastered it and for whatever reason decided he wanted to go elsewhere. Keith would leave ESPN in 1997 in controversial fashion, and Dan would begin to co-host Sports Center with Kenny Mayne and others over the next nine years. Sports Center became bigger than a single hour, but in my opinion, it never reached the heights of the big show. Ever again. Only a few short years after Keith's departure, Dan's career would also enter a new phase. In 1999, the Dan Patrick Show would become a much greater focus for Dan. Dan had maintained regular radio spots, but this would be his first crack at his own radio show. And it was an immediate success. Dan's popularity from ESPN television and his ability to interview guests while also entertaining was evident immediately. Originally, it was co-hosted by Rob Dibble. It would air from 1 to 4 on weekdays, and DP had a certain way of asking questions, engaging guests, and providing insight into sports that was on full display in this broadcasting arena. Sean Salisbury would also be a regular radio show participant, but he was never named an official co-host. Alongside the weekday radio show, Dan would also host NBA Nation in 2006 from March through the NBA Finals, which was an NBA pregame show that aired prior to ESPN's NBA games. The Dan Patrick Show would air on ESPN Radio until 2007, when after nearly 20 years on ESPN, Dan would decide to leave the network. 18 years in a job is a very long time, and it had been a long grind for Dan. From 1999 through 2007, Dan was a radio and television personality, and he desired to spend more time with his family. I was selfish. I was doing second shift. I had four kids in, you know, seven years, you know, there was four year, four, uh, seven years with four kids. And my wife's doing all the work, and I'm, I'm here at Sports Center. Patrick's departure from ESPN was cordial, but it left many speculations as to what he would do next. Dan was asked to audition for the host of The Price is Right, but he declined. What? Sports writer Rick Riley believed Dan was, quote, making one of the top five biggest career mistakes in entertainment history, end quote. Some reports surfaced that Dan Patrick had been fired from ESPN, but this was not true. Patrick would go so far as to reiterate that there were no issues with himself and management. Being quoted as saying, I am leaving ESPN on August 17th to go out on my own and be a free agent. End quote. Now we move into what is my personal favorite Dan Patrick, post ESPN Dan Patrick. Dan would look to establish his own version of the Dan Patrick show. And the DP show, as it's affectionately referenced, was originally launched in Dan's attic under a syndication deal with Content Factory. The new show would feature Dan's producers, called The Danettes, and be distributed on premier radio networks. It aired from 9 to noon and as a live stream on Dan's website. Over the years, the show added different network partners for the live stream and grew in popularity as a television property. The show's added Danettes, who were inspired by Howard Stern's interactions with his co-hosts, added a familial element along with their typical behind-the-scenes duties. Polly, Seton, Fritzy McLovin, and now Marvin have provided Dan with a sounding board and endless content. The Dan Patrick Show has continued to be a staple within sports and a blueprint for many. Dan struck out on his own and inspired many others in sports to do the same. Dan Lebetard, Ryan Rossillo, and others have cited Patrick as inspiration. One person who did not cite Dan as an inspiration was Colin Cowherd, who took shots at Dan's work ethic, saying this. This business I'm in radio, full of guys who read the sports page, rip crap off. I'm here three hours a day. Okay. So is Romy. Dan Patrick doesn't work as hard as Rome, not even close. That's why I've always respected Romy. Puts the time in. 
Patrick needs 35 producers to fill a segment. Romy doesn't. Bayless doesn't. I don't. Patrick would quickly respond by saying the following. I guess Colin Cowherd, who uh, was talking about Jim Rome and Skip Bayless's work ethic and himself, as Colin throwing himself in there about how hard they work, and that I have 35 producers and somehow I'm lazy and don't have a good work ethic. I don't have 35 producers. I don't work at the worldwide leader. And the one thing that I do is I give credit to my producers on the air. It's not a one-man show. So all the people behind the scenes who help Colin do his show, they don't get any recognition. I choose to recognize the people who work on this show. As far as work ethic, I don't know how hard Colin Cowherd works or Skip Bayless or Jim Rome. I assume they work hard. Hope they do. Try a radio network. Try a simulcast. Maybe a column for Sports Illustrated. Oh, that's right. Host the Olympics and Football Night in America. And do Sports Jeopardy as well, Colin. Try that. And then we can discuss work ethic. Until then, enjoy your show. Enjoy your life. Because it'll be over one day and nobody will care. Just like nobody's going to care about what I'm saying right now. I got to take a nap. I'm exhausted from working so hard on this show. <laughs> DP has always been open and honest about his need to go out on his own and create an independent format. I remember, you know, you're trying to figure out exactly, you know, who you are. And I had to get my ass kicked when I left ESPN because it's so easy to get comfortable there. It's it's powerful. And, you know, it's a it's an elixir there. And, and I just thought, you know what, I wouldn't get any better. And I, I needed to find out if I could get better. And, you know, I, I left, but I've never been happier than those three years doing a show in my attic with, uh, with my Dan Entz. One thing we can agree on is the Dan Patrick Show has become an institution within Sports Talk. But this is not the only accomplishment that Dan has since leaving ESPN. In 2008, Dan would agree to host Football Night in America for the next decade. He would present Super Bowl trophies, cover the Summer and Winter Olympics, host coverage of the Stanley Cup Finals, Sports Jeopardy, and become a world-renowned actor. He often mentions his family of three daughters, a son, and his wife, all of whom may be directly attributed as a piece of Dan's willingness to embark on his independent path post-ESPN. I was selfish. I was doing second shift. I had four kids in, you know, seven years, you know, there was four years, four, uh, seven, years with four kids and my wife's doing all the work and i'm i'm here at sports center dan's contributions to the media are countless but perhaps his greatest accomplishment is still a daily sports talk radio show separate from espn or any other major network here's one thing we all have espn muscles i had them for 18 years leave espn get out and do what i do try it the show has remained his own on the air and successful his conversational tone great interviews, and mild but informed takes are complemented by the ambiance of the man cave. He has created a show that can entertain with or without great guests. A show with weekly meet Fridays, inside jokes we are all let in on. He's covered every major sporting event from the MLB, NBA, NFL, and NHL, along with the Olympics. He helped establish ESPN and SportsCenter, became a movie star, survived departing the mothership, and made media better. Over the last decade, I have enjoyed listening to and watching The Dan Patrick Show. He is my favorite voice in sports media, and I've tried to make this video as objective as possible. As a fan, I hope I've done Dan's career justice. This has been The Unlikely Success. Sports Center is a, that, that is a high wire act every night. Can you stay in the Chicago area? Um, do you like Howard Stern's butt cheese? We've been had. That was not Steve Bartman.